Broadcasting live from Houston, Texas, and around the world, and around the world, TV host, best-selling author, and radio personality, Brad Gilmore, brings you a collection of conversations with stars from movies. Mark Wahlberg. Hey, how are you? The legendary Mr. Christopher Lloyd. Christopher, how are we doing? I'm doing good. Great (laughs) introduction. Television. Jimmy Fallon joins us this morning. Jimmy, how you doing, my friend? Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate this, bud. Kelly Ripper. Brad, thank you for having me. Comedy. Jay Leno joins us. Jay, how you doing? Hey, Brad, what's going on? Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias. Good morning. Music. Lola Monroe. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The legendary frontman of ACDC, Brian Johnson, joins us right now. Brian, how you doing? Good morning, Brad. What lucky to talk to me, funny lad. Grammy Award winner Maya joins us. How are you? And more. And more. This is, is the, the collection. collection. Now your host, host the, the boat, boat, Brad, Brad Gilmore. Gilmore. Anthony Ramos, so great to talk to you, man. Congratulations on the movie. I saw it last night. People were cheering. People were laughing. It got a standing ovation at the screening I was at. So congrats on making a great film. That's fire. Standing ovation. Where'd you watch the movie? So I'm in Houston. So at the Houston screening, man, they all stood up at the end. People were walking out like their mind had just been blown. Really fun time at the movie, man. Come on, man. Let's go. Let's go. I'm hyped to be on ESPN Radio right now, though. Mike and Mike, all yo, like that. I, I used to listen to those guys all the time, so this this is cool to be talking to you right now. Well, man, what I want to talk about with this film, the first thing that stood out to me when I'm watching it, there's so many great things about it, but the first thing that stood out to me was the music, man. You can't paint New York City in the 90s without the hip hop uh, that came out during that time. So many great records were played throughout the movie, but my question to you is, what was the record that you would go to or a couple songs or an artist that you would go to that would get you in that New York state of mind in the, in the mid-1990s? I mean, you know, you know, Jay-Z, Big L, you know, any 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 of them joints like Twins by Big Pun and Fat Joe, uh, you know, Shook Ones by Mob D, you know, uh G, any any notorious B.I.G., anything biggie, you know what I'm saying? So juicy hypnotize, uh, you know, so so you know, these are all joints that that you know got me hyped. The other thing that stu- stands out to me, man, is the the swag that your character has, the way that his fits are hanging right, the dress that he's got going on, a lot of Jordan paraphernalia. Is that something that you brought to the character and said, man, and I got to come correct with the J's on the feet? Or was that something that Stephen Cable Jr. and the production came with? Yeah, Stephen and Sierra, our costume designer, they really, they already had that in mind. You know, Sierra's amazing. She she just like, she she said something really cool yesterday. We had, we had a panel and she said... I wanted the I wanted the characters' outfits to be so authentic and so fire that no one's even thinking about the costumes. They're literally just focusing on the performance because the fits are everything is just on point, you know. And Sierra, um, I think Sierra just did an incredible job, man. She's so creative and worked so hard to um, to make us all look amazing. When you have a movie like this that's so special effects heavy, a lot of the times, you know, movies that you've done before, when you're on set, you're seeing the characters in real life. And this one, they come to life later on and we get to see them on the screen. How much do you rely on the vision of Stephen Capel Jr. in order to kind of execute what's needed in the scene when you're kind of acting against nothing? You just, I mean, it's really just about using your imagination. And like, you, you, you really put the scenario together. We really work hard to to um to establish the world where we're at we're like all right what, what's going on here what are we doing what emotional state are we supposed to be am i supposed to be in right now all right cool where are we standing where are we going where are we starting where are we end all right wait where's the tennis ball where's optimus where's bumblebee cool let's rehearse this a couple times and then you just you just kind of dive in and you just like then you make it up as you go right you, you start finding things you're like you know what actually if i stood over there in this moment or if b did this Instead of doing that, you know, because it's like you, you're working with an imagine you can li- you can do anything <laughs> with these robots. So you you almost anything, right? So you can you can change scenes dramatically for the better. Um, you know. Uh, when when you're working like this. Well, the movie's incredible. I had a great time. Like I said, the crowd had a great time when I saw it, and I know everyone's going to love the movie, and you're excellent in it, Anthony. So thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.
Hurry up, tape running out.